our exercise technique videos for Exercise Science 282, Techniques of Weight Training, where we are going to walk you through the exercises you learn in class so you can use these to supplement your learning outside of class time. So first we're going to demonstrate myofascial release, and we're doing this using a black foam roller here. So myofascial release is a technique that works on your muscle tissue to release tension. And typically it's done with a foam roller, a small ball, or some similar apparatus. And the technique involves rolling around your, um, rolling your muscles from the distal to the proximal end until you find a tight or a tender area. And then what you're going to do is just kind of hang out on that spot for about 15 to 45 seconds until you feel the tension release. And while you're there, you want to breathe, relax, allow your muscle tissue to just melt into the foam roller rather than tensing up against it. And I know it can be kind of hard and painful, so you want to use a foam roller that's at the appropriate density for you. If you end up tensing against it, you're just going to increase the tension in that muscle tissue. So the main goal is to just find those tender spots, breathe, and relax into it. So Kaylin's going to start by foam rolling her calves, starting from the distal, moving towards the proximal end. And then whenever she finds a tender spot, she's just going to hang there, breathe, melt into it. Now you can do this directly on the back of your calves, or you can bias the medial or lateral sides just by turning your legs like Kaylin is doing here. And if this is not enough tension, you can cross one leg over the other and do one leg at a time, and this will dramatically increase the tension or the pressure on one calf. Good. Further, you can just kind of find a spot and hang there, and then Kaylin could roll her ankle, the bottom one, yeah, there you go, to kind of move that tissue around while she has it pinned to that foam roller. So from here, she's going to move up to her hamstrings. So again, she's going to start at the distal end towards her knee, move up towards the hip, looking for any tender spots. And when she finds one, she's going to hang there. Just like with the calves, she can bias the medial or the lateral hamstrings by turning her legs one way or the other. Good. Again, finding a tender spot and holding it. From here, I'm going to have Kaylin flip over, and she's going to foam roll her quads. Again, starting distal, moving proximal, so she'll start right above the knee and move towards the hips. She's going to stabilize on her elbows here and keep her spine in a nice neutral position. A lot of times people will let their spine relax and collapse their belly towards the floor, which will put a lot of pressure on your lumbar spine. So Kaylin's not going to do that. She's going to keep a nice neutral spine by slightly engaging her core. She's going to look for any tender spots and then just hang out and breathe. And from here, we're going to move towards the adductor, the muscles of your inner thighs. So we're going to change the foam roller so that it's parallel to your body. And then you're going to kick a leg out so that it's perpendicular, rolling the muscles along the inner thighs, again, distal to proximal, looking for tender spots. This is usually an area where you'll find a lot of them. Holding there and breathing, hanging out. We're going to bring that foam roller back to the center now for her hip flexors. So this is going to be right below your ASIS, those bony prominences that you can feel on the front. This is kind of a poor tool for it. A ball is a better tool for the hip flexors, tennis ball, lacrosse ball, um, or any other kind of soft, kind of hard but squishy ball. And you're going to hang out there, again, looking for tender spots in your hip flexors. You can lean towards one side to bias one side or the other and put a little bit more pressure. This is often an area that a lot of people have tension, so this is a good place to roll before doing any kind of lower body lifts. And then she's just going to slightly angle from there, not going all the way to her side, but she's going to turn somewhat obliquely, imagining if you put your hands in your front pockets here, and that's going to be your TFL. Perfect. And so the TFL is another often tender muscle that attaches to your IT band, which then runs down to your knee. So if this muscle is tight, it can pull on that IT band a little bit and cause some lateral knee pain. We don't want to roll our IT bands. That's the uh, tendinous tissue, tendinous band along the sides of your legs because it's actually just a band of tissue. It's not a muscle. So foam rolling, it's not going to help and it actually can aggravate it a little bit more if it's already in pain. From there, she's going to keep going all the way to the side just a little bit more, aiming for the side of her hip. That's going to be your glute med muscle, glute med and min. And so she's just going to kind of roll there. These can often be pretty tender. 
Then I'm going to have her flip over, roll all the way to the front, cross one leg over into a figure four position, which is just going to kind of expose her glute max a little bit more. And then she's going to lean onto the side of the leg that's folded. This is targeting her glute max and her deep external hip rotators. And the tender points are gonna be different on every body, so you don't always have to start from the bottom and work your way all the way up. You can kind of figure out what points are tender for you or your client, and then focus primarily on those areas. Good. From here, we're gonna move up her body a little bit. We're gonna skip the lumbar spine, the lower back, because that region requires so much stability and it is susceptible to injury, we don't wanna put it in a compromised position, so we don't actually roll the lower back or the lumbar spine. So she's moving up to her thoracic spine now, her upper back which is an area where we do want a lot of mobility. From here, she can keep her hands across her chest or she can bring them behind her head to find a little bit more extension there. And those are pretty much the only areas that we'll do with a foam roller. If you wanted to get something like a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, or a softball, you could also target areas like your pec minor right here at the front of your shoulder or all of your rotator cuff muscles right around here or your uh, spinal erectors along the sides of your spine. But for most of those regions, you'd want to take the ball, press it against a wall, and use the same exact technique. So a ball is going to be better for small areas, like the front and back of your shoulder, maybe the front and sides of your hip, and the foam roller is a better tool for bigger, broader areas.